Hello, hello. So in this video, I want to cover APAC Gateway and give a, a very kind of an introductory level uh, intro to uh, <laughs> API Gateway. And just like this previous video, so in the previous video, we used the Lambda Council to create a Lambda Hello function. And if you haven't done that video yet, you should go back and actually view that video so you have that Hello function because we're going to be using in this video to connect it to API Gateway. We're going to build API Gateway completely manually and we're going to hook it up to that Lambda function. Okay, uh, before we get going, I want to cover a couple concepts and, uh, and basic stuff. Uh, so let's go to the JET site actually, and let's look at routing. So JETS has this concept of routing routes. And what you do is you use uh, this uh, DSL language right here to define uh, RESTful routes, right? You can define a git route to this uh, post URL here, or you can define a post uh, HTTP verb here to this route here, and you connect it to controllers and those controllers controller actions and those control actions essentially are Lambda functions, right? So Jets basically does this all, but I wanted to kind of remove some of the mystery of this and the magic and show how to do it all manually. So all this that we're kind of doing, uh, we're, we're just gonna basically do it manually in this video. Okay, I also want to review the last Lambda function we created. So in the last video, we created a hello Lambda function, and here it is. It's the same Lambda function we ran earlier, or, or we created in the previous video. So here it is, it's the same Lambda function. And then one more thing, we gotta cover some terminology. So here are API gateway terms that are important to understand and know. Really, really only need, we really only need to know three. REST API, that's just an enclosure or the, this is the record that encapsulates all the resources underneath your API because we can create multiple APIs. So we're just gonna create one demo API in this video, but REST API just represents the entire API, okay? Then there's resource. Resource uh, is essentially a URL path. So we kind of go back to this documentation right here. This right here, posts, that's a resource. Post new, that's a resource, it's a URL path. You could also think about it as a node underneath a path tree, okay? Uh, that's what that is. And then last term that you need to know is method. So API gateway method. API gateway method are just HTTP verbs. So there's git, post, delete, there's options, there's head, there's a bunch of different verbs, okay? So uh, we are going to uh, now jump into it because now we understand the basic terms, okay? Uh, let's see, build API gateway right here. Oh, the proxy structure, we'll cover that in a bit. Uh, let's go to the API gateway right here and we'll start moving some windows around. Um, let's move that here, terms. And let's just move it so you kind of see it right there. So there's REST API resource method, okay? So we're gonna jump through it now and go click getting started. Okay, when you do getting started, it's gonna prompt you to create a demo and it's gonna basically create this whole uh, API pet uh, demo here, but we're gonna actually just click okay and we're not we're gonna ignore that because we're gonna do everything manually here just to focus on learning. Okay, REST is the protocol you wanna choose, new API to create a brand new API. We're gonna call it demo. Uh, we don't really care for a description. And then there's three endpoint types here. We don't see one choose regional. If you choose edge optimized, it basically creates um, a cloud front distribution, which takes 10 to 15 minutes. So to make this quick, we're gonna create regional and that's good for most purposes, to be honest. Okay, so create API and that created the API. So here is the API, it's a demo. And here's the API ID. That's like a unique ID for the API. So we cover right there, that REST API. That's the enclosure that, in, 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 that contains all our API resources as well as methods, okay? It by default creates one method for you right away, the root method, or I'm sorry, the root resource, which is slash right here, right? But there's no methods yet. So now we have to go click action, create method. And we're gonna create a git method, okay? And then you click that and then you click check. And then from there, it gives you like this wizard here it says what integration type you want. We want a Lambda function. We're gonna hook this up and call our hello function, okay? Uh, Lambda proxy. So now I get to cover this. So Lambda proxy is, um, uh, before the Lambda proxy kind of standard, um, you could basically, you have to tell API gateway how your Lambda function output maps back to API. So this gave you an extreme amount of flexibility, but also made it pretty complicated. Uh, and then they invented this thing called Lambda Proxy Integration. So Lambda Proxy Integration is a standard format. And the standard format is actually documented in here, building API Gateway with Lambda Proxy Integration. Then you kind of have to scroll through here and you have to find the example. 
But essentially, you have to return a, a dictionary or a hash structure with status code and body at minimal. You can also return headers. But at minimal, status code and body. So if you actually looked at this Lambda function that I recreated, there's a status code and there's a body here. Actually, I'm going to change this to JSON dump. Because when you do that, it actually makes it a little prettier in, in CloudWatch logs. Okay, I'm going to just test it real quick. That looks like it's uh, working all good. Okay. Anyway, so going back here, there's status code and there's body. Okay. So those are the two things in the Lambda integration proxy structure that you need in order for API to understand the results of your Lambda function. Okay. And then since that's what we're going to return, we get click that checkbox. And then the region is US West. Two, and then once you start typing here, it should autocomplete. So it's just hello. Okay, that's the line of function. You hit save, and then you ask it for permission. This is basically saying, uh, give API Gateway this resource permission to invoke that line of function. So you click OK there, and then now it created it. And now it's going to give you this nice uh, uh, diagram here that's showing you a hey, request comes in, it hits the line of function, and it responds back. And if you click on this, it actually brings up the same line of function. So that's how you kind of know is you're hooked up to the right lambda function, all that. Okay, kill that one. And now we're kind of ready to deploy it. So this is very important. It's something that's pretty easy to forget, especially when, if you're doing this for the first time. To, you actually have to deploy your API gateway. So to deploy, you actually have to be underneath the resource uh, menu here. And then you can click, click Actions, and you can go click Deploy API. And I'm just going to stick to Jet's kind of conventions here. I'm going to call this Dev and click Deploy. And that's it. We deploy our API, and it's giving us an endpoint right here. So here I can go ahead and grab this guy now, and we could test it. So we know, and this is one part that I find a little bit confusing, but you just kind of get used to it. To find out where your resources are, you have to click on this under here. But to change your resource, you have to click on resources here. I'm just going to go back to resources. So we know there's a git method underneath the root URL, the root resource. So we're going to go back here. Now we're going to curl the, uh, the endpoint, the root endpoint. And notice that the stage name is actually added at the end here. You can get rid of it by using something called custom domains, but that should be covered in another topic or video. But anyway, so that's basically the root path and it's returning hello from Lambda. So where's that hello from Lambda coming from? Or from our Lambda function? Let's go look at the Lambda function to confirm. See, you go here and you see status code and body. And the body is basically, it's like hello from Lambda. So let's say if we change this to hello from Lambda 2 and save it, okay, and curl it again. We should expect it to return to and us right there. All right, so you can make changes on the fly right there by changing your Lambda functions. Gateway API references your Lambda function. Okay, uh, now let's go ahead and create another resource just to kind of really drive this home. Let's go back here because we actually actually I haven't created a resource yet, so we should create a resource. Let's go here, action, and then from here you can go create resource. And from here I'm just gonna call it hello, <laughs> not very um, um, creative, but anyway. Hello, and it kind of auto completes your path there. We don't really need to enable cores for now. Uh, and then uh, we can go create resource, and that creates a resource. So remember, resources are kind of like paths, but there's nothing, there's no HTTP verb underneath that resource yet. There's no method. So now we have to go create a method, and just so we can learn, we're going to create another method, except this time we're going to do a post, right? Just so it's different a little bit. We're going to hook up to the same Lambda function, uh, use proxy integration, type, start typing. And then click on the autocomplete right there and hit save. And permission again, we're going to allow API Gateway, this resource, to call the uh, Lambda function. Okay, so we're done. Except remember, we have to deploy. Okay, so actually, we have to go deploy API again, click dev, deploy. Now we are really done. And it usually takes a couple seconds, um, but I'm going to go ahead and curl the same endpoint we are hit right there. I'm going to actually start adding echo here just to make it look a little prettier. There you go. Now, Remember, we want to hit, uh, no, not post, hello, right? But we want to do with the uh, post HTTP verb. So let's, uh, that's how you do with curl. You do the, the uh, X and then you go post. So that's going to hit hello too, see? Uh, now, what happens if we hit, let's say, a resource that doesn't exist? Like with, if, you do, with, if you use curl without the dash X a post, by default, it gets it. It, it uses git. So it's going to return this missing authentication token, right? You could also... Uh, just go blah, that's going to return this. So basically, that's the error message. I, I think it's a little bit confusing, so it's good to point out. That's the error message when there's no REST API gateway resource right there. Okay? Um, so that's uh, that shows that. Let's see what else. Uh, let's change it one more time. Let's go here and change it to back to where it was. 
save, okay? And then now we just hit it again. Let's hit hello with post here. That, yeah, there, it got rid of the two. And then let's hit the root URL. And this is gonna be git, not post, because uh, that resource is not available. So delete that, and that's available. So essentially what we did was we manually created this entire API right here with kind of two resources and two um, methods. And that's exactly kind of what this DSL translates it to, okay? So I just want to connect the dots there, kind of remove some of that mystery and, and, and magic. And that's essentially all, all it really does. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you found videos like this helpful, uh, subscribe. If you, found, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up because it encourages more content like this. If you want to watch future videos like this, subscribe to this channel. Okay, thanks so much for watching, guys. Cheers.